Hello, everyone, and welcome. Hi. Um, we are here today to talk about oil painting using the oil on canvas brushes. I have a link pinned in the chat as well as in the description if you want to check those out specifically. We're going to go through, um, Abby's going to run through the uh, specifics of the brushes themselves and a couple techniques for using the different um, types. And then we're going to jump in and I'll lead you through painting some florals. Cool. Okay, um, let me share my screen. And okay, so I'm first gonna show you how to set up your canvas um, when you're gonna paint with the set. So I'm just gonna make a nice big rectangle, which I've named big rectangle because I'm so original. And when you open this brush set, you'll see they're five brush sets. The top one is all of the oil brushes without any texture, canvas texture, I mean. Then each of the packs has a slightly different canvas texture. So if you paint on canvas, you'll know that not every canvas has the same grain to it. Some canvas has a tighter weave, some canvas is a bit more loose. Um, the one feels like you bought it from the dollar store, etc. So uh, let me demonstrate how to set that up. So each um, canvas texture brush set has the actual texture in a brush at the top. And that one, you grab the, a gray, a sort of a mid-tone gray. When I'm grabbing gray, I always open the classic color picker, put my little dot on the extreme left in about the center. And what you're gonna do is make a bunch of layers and then on the very top layer, just swoosh over the whole canvas with that brush, the canvas texture brush. This one is Harold. They're all named after dogs that I had in my childhood. Harold oh, was I didn't the, know that. Yeah, That's so sweet. Harold was the puppy that we had um, in a litter and he was the one that we kept. Oh. Um, he was my sister's dog, Shem. And he weed on my bed, like daily. It was a bit of a day. Um, I love that they're all human names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the, um, so then I set the, that layer to linear burn, and I drop the um, opacity to about fifty percent because if it's very dark, you get a bit too much kind of texture on your on your canvas, and um, yeah. I like it a bit brighter. So. You'll notice as soon as you grab a brush that when you paint, can you see the, the texture bumps here? Yeah. When you paint, the bumps in the texture of the brush will correspond exactly with the bumps in that texture. Because after all, when you paint on a proper canvas, when you paint lightly, the brush will brush over those bumps in the exact same places every time because the bumps don't move on a canvas. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But that is if you have it, um, the canvas parallel to the screen yes. edge, correct? Yes, because um, there is a limitation that you can't get the texture to align with the canvas without um, the canvas being square. So if you put it like this, they won't align perfectly. But if you put it straight again, they do. Yeah, so that's... if if that's going to bother you, maintain your canvas in a straight alignment with the edges straight to the edge and the tops are like that. Yeah. Um, but if it doesn't bother you and it's something you can live with, go ahead and swivel your canvas around. It's also something to keep in mind if you're later on transforming your painting. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that it's good or bad. It's just something to be aware of because you want to get the result. What I found want. is if, I, if I'm going to transform something like, let's say, um, now this is wonky and the texture doesn't line up. If I grab a smudge tool, which texture did I use? So I'm on Harold. If I grab a smudge tool and use 
let's say Brushtacular Express, which is actually the one I like for smudging, and I smudge it, that has the correct alignment and the smudging will Brilliant. make it go back to how it was, unless, you know, I'm going to wreck it or whatever. I think you just have to work within the limitations. But um, I don't think it bothers me that much if things are slightly out of whack. So, yeah. Um, uh, Joan asked, Joan's Paper Emporium asked a really good question um, using these brushes. Do you have to use a background texture that resembles the canvas? And I think that just demonstrated how much texture the brushes have on their own. Yeah. So if you turn off the texture, the um, I'm smudging still, the actual brushes contain tons of texture in, in <laughs> themselves. So you can forego that texture um, overlay completely if you want to. And um, you'll find that they're different. super pressure sensitive uh, yeah. so that the less pressure you apply, they don't necessarily get narrower like some brushes, like in size, yeah. they become more textured. Yes, because when you paint with oil paints, you don't have a lot of oil paint brushes that narrow to a point. The majority of brushes for painting with oils are actually like a little square um, flat bunch of hair. And when you paint with them and you want to taper off the amount of paint on your um, canvas, you'll gradually lift and it will disappear. Okay. And, and if you there's... want a straight line, you would narrow the brush to the side. Okay. I was going to say, there seems to be some twisting, um, like wrist yeah. motion that happens yeah. too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very cool. So um, what I wanted was when I made this brush set, I really wanted it to be really have a, the sim, a similar feeling to painting with real oil paint on canvas. So that's why I added those sort of idiosyncrasies that I hope people are going to appreciate and not find limiting. Yeah, I think just understanding the why behind it, um, yeah. even for people like me who haven't actually painted with oils in real life, it's still understandable. And um, yeah. I was going to say, I think it's really impressive that you get not only the feel of painting with oils, but also such a realistic look, which I know you're about to get into how to take yeah. that above and beyond. Yeah. Okay, so there's this, there are two brushes in this pack um, in the first set that doesn't have any texture with it um, that are called Thick Paint Highlights and Thick Paint Shadows. It's these two at the top. Those are used primarily after you've finished painting your whole piece. Let me show you what I did earlier. So this is just a quick squidgy rough up. Um, after you've finished painting your whole piece, go to a layer right above all of the, let me delete these so they're not confusing, above all of the painting that you've done. So imagine this is a complete masterpiece. And then you'd go and grab a, a brush. I like thick. Um, there's a thick oil in all of them. So I, I'm going to go for thick. And let's just pick a color. Um, and then to add a bit of realism, there's an impasto effect that you can achieve with oil paint where the paint is very thick and lies on top of the rest of the image. And you can actually see the squidgy um, dents of the bristles of the brush within the stroke. And it dries like that and it stays in a 3D shape. So if you'd like to just bump up the realism and, and create that effect, go on top of your texture and I'm just going to paint a few little smudges. And then you're going to grab gray again. And either of these two work with that mid-tone gray. So grab the, you can either grab the highlights one. The one that's called highlights works very well on darker colors. So... I'll do it on this one. Okay. And you can see it look like a 3D paint stroke. Yeah. 
and we'll use the shadows one on this one. I love that you don't have to fuss around and choose the right tonal shade that the brush yeah. does that part for you is very cool. Yeah. And I think with these, the less is more approach is the best. If you're going to squidge all over your um, canvas with many of these little things, it's going to start looking a little bit gimmicky. So I think the odd one to just kind of hint at realism is what you're looking for and not over the top everywhere kind of switching. Yeah. So the way that these brushes work is they require a color to actually be, to be painted onto. So they don't work where there isn't anything. Yeah. They just look like a gray line and that's um, kind of not exactly what you're looking for. To give that highlight or the darker effect, they actually have to be painted onto another color. So let me do another. Like that. Oh, yeah. Now, if you um, have painted a couple of strokes that are all overlapping, say, and you only, and you want to do this thing on both of them, I just do the automatic select and go, okay, this is for the orange one. Grab my gray and this. And then you can isolate the one that you're trying to make your squidge on. And it doesn't go off the edges of the squidge either. Yeah, that's cool because you don't have to try to align the size of the brush perfectly with the previous yes. brush stroke that you did. Exactly. There you go. So it adds a little bit of realism to the vibe of your painting. Yeah, it's a real wow factor for sure. Yeah. Cool. So okay, now before you oh before cool. you go out of your canvas, I was wondering if you oh. could talk um quickly through the um just like the different types because you have like wet and dry oh, and yeah, thick. Sure. Okay, let me go back to this canvas that I made just now. Um so it was a Herald. Um this brush tacular express I use for sort of um, loose, expressive, uh, smeary um, painting because it mixes quite well, but it's still very dry. It doesn't have much kind of uh, wet, oily feel to it. The oilier brushes are here at the bottom, saturated, textured, um, and wet. Wet okay. is really wet when I say this will drag a lot of paint with it as you go. So okay. if you want to have a more mixy kind of vibe, then use the ones that say wet or saturated. Um, yeah, so if you think of, of wet as equivalent to mixing brushes. Yes, yes, exactly. So think yeah. about it as if you've got your, if you're painting on a real canvas and you want to dilute something or you want it to um, smudge in with the next door layer, you don't grab just a tiny bit of paint. You're going to grab a big wet blob and you're going to work it in so that it pulls the rest of the its neighboring paint with it. And maybe this is a silly question, but when you're painting with real oils, does yep. the fresh paint that you apply then um, mix in even with the dried paint below? No, it doesn't. When the okay. paint dries underneath it, it goes completely impervious. It sort of um, forms like a rubbery layer that you can't okay. reactivate. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. And another one of my very favorite brushes to use that I mentioned before is this one called Thick. The reason I like it is because unlike the other ones, you can, um, let's say you want to add some 
of a really glazed look like um, you would if you were just trying to make it look like there was a little bit of light on the one side of something. You can drop the opacity of this brush and then when you paint over, you can still see the previous color underneath. Yeah. And maybe if you want to make it a little bit darker, you can still see the other color underneath it. I use this brush a lot for creating light and shadow um, because it's really, uh, it gives that kind of uh, sort of glazed look. I was looking at your uh, photo that you posted on Instagram today. I'm going to link it here in the chat. Um, in case anybody doesn't follow Abby, they definitely should. She posts her amazing artwork, but she, you posted this beautiful landscape and I was studying oh, where the detail of that. The lighting on the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. And is, is that what you used? Yes, that's exactly what I used. So for example, here, this rock here, you can see. Oh yeah. I painted the basic shape of it and then I, did that glazed effect over the top and it just did one smudge of, I think it was a white on this top edge. Because when you're painting <coughs> with oils, um, has anybody seen impressionist painting? So the idea of the impressionists was that when you squidge down your eyes, everything actually becomes little areas of color. So if you're looking at an image that you want to paint in oil paints, and you want it to give you the vibe and the, the feel of the, of the image, squidge your eyes down so that it becomes little shapes made out of different colors. So I spend a lot of time painting like this. <laughs> so, that I can, so that you can separate. If you do that, you can kind of separate, is that area a bright green area? And you're not thinking too hard about the shape, too hard about in that bush, you're actually thinking about the light creating the shape of that bush. And as you go, you can layer more and more and more detail on, but starting with the big areas of the different sort of bright area, and then there's a dark area over there that's shaped like that, and then there's maybe a brighter area here that's shaped like this. And as you piece it all together, your image suddenly starts to grow out of the canvas. This is just, I am loving listening to this. I feel <laughs> like I am transported to an art class. Like you're my um, art professor. <laughs> <laughs> Our one art teacher, um, he was quite tricky. He gave us this um, sort of little test. He And he put a painting of a boat and a painting of a goose and then a boat, a little boat next to them. And he said, which two objects are the most alike? And we all said, obviously, the painting of the boat and the boat. And he yeah. said, no, not at all. The boat is nothing like the painting of a boat. The painting of the boat and the painting of the goose are the most alike because they're both a flat thing with the oil paint on the front. <laughs> the boat is nothing like the painting of a boat. And we all suddenly went, oh, okay because a painting is actually just a trick. It's a flat plane tricking you into believing that it's something that's 3D. Yeah. And it's all about your perception of the light coming off things. And that was the whole Impressionists um, thing that they went to. I love that so much. It really challenges you to think differently. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I have to. I have to let my cat in. I don't know if you can hear her in the background <laughs> meowing. Come in. You can come in. Cats always want the uh, the in and out privileges. You know, they don't want oh, yes. one or if the they're other. In, they want to be out. They want to be out. They want to be in. Yeah. All right. So let me quickly link up the photos that I am pulling here for you in the chat. Um, I have a Pinterest photo to pull for color. And then I have in the reference photo slot here, um, the Pexels photo of these two links that I sent. Um, the 
color one. I'm just going to screen grab and show you how to make a color palette out of that first. And then I will hide the Pinterest app so I have the full screen for you. So to pull a uh, Pinterest photo into the color palette, you can't drag and drop like you can with a Safari photo or a Google Chrome from your browser. Um, you do have to take a screenshot, but you can do that pretty easily. Um, by, it's going to be different on every iPad. Um, I have an iPad Pro, so I'm gonna hold the volume button and the power button. Um, if you have a circle button at the base of your iPad, a home button, you can press that and the power button. I missed um, that home button on the new iPads. They I missed it on my saved, phone. <laughs> they've saved us time, but they have just robbed us. So what I'm doing is dragging it over to my color palettes. And even if you don't have color palettes open, open if you hover over this circle, um, it'll open it up for you and create the space here and you can drop it in. And this inadvertently will also make, um, it'll pull colors from whatever else was on my screen, of course. So I'm getting both of these, which is pretty cool because I get a broader mix as well. So I'm gonna close that. Um, and to get the reference photo in here, it's under actions and then canvas, and then you can turn on reference. And I have turned mine over to the image section. Uh, it uh, automatically drops into canvas when you first open that up. You can tap it to hide the bar, and then you can drag from the corners to resize it and crop it. And then within the reference window, you can also pinch and pan and zoom as well as color pick. So that is what we have for references. You can always pull from your own if you don't wanna use what I have linked here. I know Abby has a different one that she is going to be following along with as we go. Um, um, just a tip that I use for the reference pane is I like to resize the reference pane so that the um, ratio of the size is roughly the same as the canvas I'm using. And then I position my reference in it so that the composition is already right. And I'm painting it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's clever. So you, if you're rotating it, would go ahead and do that. Yes, exactly. So, in, and it's uh, sort of orientated how I'm gonna paint it so I don't have to fart around later. Yeah, I love that. Oh, oh, cool. Okay, Loopy Tune says you can drag your Apple Pencil from the bottom corner diagonally across the screen to take a screenshot as well. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my what? gosh. From the bottom, okay, which amazing. bottom corner? Um, I did the left. <laughs> My brain just exploded. I'm absolutely Thank you so delighted. much for that incredible tip. That is so cool. I love how there's always more to learn. <laughs> All right, so I have, I'm working in a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas. Uh, the beauty of texture brushes is that you can work in any canvas size. We're not gonna be using a ton of layers, so you don't have to worry about working in a small canvas size if you run into layer limits typically. On my top layer here, I've already set up my canvas and I am using the Herald textures. Um, within, I think Abby might have touched, but I think we've had touched on this, but we've had some people join us since the beginning. Um, within these, uh, each brush set is a different texture, but the brushes within are the same and you'll see the naming cadence stays the same. So if you're using a different texture, you can follow along and just listen to the, the name of the brush and match it up or um, see where, where it's at. I've also added some emojis into my brush sets to <laughs> mark out which ones are my favorites. Um, just because when you're looking at brushes quickly and you wanna grab something that you know, or if you're coming back to brushes for the first time in a long time, um, I always try to do that when I find something I love, try to put an emoji next to the name so I remember in the future. That's brilliant. That's really <laughs> clever. It's, it's one of my favorite brush organization tips because um, I also clearly do it on my brush sets as well. Uh, when you get a lot and you want to scroll through, it's nice to have something to help differentiate. 
All right, so I'm working on Herald. I have five layers. My top layer already has the canvas set to linear burn, and I'm going to work on my third layer. So I have two layers underneath, and I'm gonna just start painting in some flowers um, using the thick oil, which is the fourth brush down in all of the sets. And all of the brushes have color um, variation already built into them. So as you paint and lift your pencil, the next stroke is gonna be a tiny bit of a different color. And that's just to add a little bit of a more organic vibe to it. Because when you do paint for real and oils, you almost invariably never can achieve the same color in two brush strokes. So it makes it much more sort of free and realistic. I love it too, because um, it saves so much time rather than going in and trying to get that look and effect yourself. Having the built-in color variation um, means that you can you can just do more. Yeah. So when I'm painting these blobby florals, as I call them, um, I am not staying faithful to the reference image. Um, I think that Abby's tips about squinting and, and <laughs> squidging, I think you'd said, um, really makes a ton of sense to do here as well. Um, the only real changes that I make um, within like this, this sidebar here, I'm realizing you can't see my fingers pointing, but I change the brush size quite a bit as I go. Um, but typically when I'm painting these, I like to uh, use one brush for most of it. And that's also um, one of my biggest tips for familiarizing yourself with brushes. If um, you find it overwhelming, you don't know how to use all of them and you want to get started, but you don't really know where to, um, I recommend just picking one and using that. And then if you wanna mix things up more, you can um, throw in a second one, but it's a good way to familiarize yourself with brushes is to just start small. Yeah. You don't have to use eight different brushes in one painting. Yeah, that's a really good, that's an excellent tip. If I was going to pick one brush that I was the only brush I was allowed to use ever out of this pack, it would be thick oil. But that's Is just that what I'm, oh, that's what I'm using right now. Yeah, that's because I really love how you can get a soft um, textural stroke if you press really softly, and you can also get a really thick, uh, goopy stroke if you press hard. Oh, yeah. Um, do, does every single brush have the color variation or are there any that are solidly one color? They all have a tiny bit of variation. I don't think there are any that are just one color. Okay. Oh, I love that deep teal. It's such a nice color, isn't it? It is, and it's not something that I maybe would have chosen otherwise. Yeah. I think that's kind of the fun surprise of pulling in um, a photo as you get unexpected yeah. colors. That is one of my absolute favorite things about this most recent um, update is that right. um, color pulling in thing. It's just, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, Lori asked, uh, how did you use the photo to create the color palette again? And so let me just pull up from the bottom to show you quick here. Um, I pull up an app in side by side and I'll do this one in Chrome, um, so that you can see it actually dragging and dropping. Um, let's do, let's do this one. And I... You don't have to have the color palette window open. You can just um, tap on the photo from the app and you'll see the plus sign appear as you move it around and then drag it over. Ooh, ooh. Oh, okay. Let me, let me backtrack on that. <laughs> I was wrong. You do have to, if you're pulling from a browser, you do have to have the color palette window open. So then you just drag over and drop 
into the palette area and it'll automatically pull it in. Um, that is so cool. I love that. It's it, so cool. Yeah. And then if you take a screenshot, which we'll do using that new trick. Um, that's just changed my whole life. Who was that really, person? I love them. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, then you can drag the screenshot in without having the color palettes open. Bring my color palettes back down here and make my app full screen. Um, Jana asked, Abby, other than the thick oil ones, which mm -hmm. do you recommend specifically for florals? Um, it depends what kind of florals you're doing. So if you're doing a more realistic and you wanted to have a bit more of a soft kind of smeary look, I would probably go for the ones at the bottom of the um, brush um, packs, the blunt wet all the way up to linseed. Those are really nice. And if you want to smudge in a wet kind of way, use any of those brushes. If you're going for a more dry kind of um, expressive look, I would probably use thick oil and then and um, brush tacular express. And I'd definitely use brush tacular express for my smudging part. Uh, Ratty dry is probably the one that I use for sticks, twigs, um, branches, etc. The most because okay. it's a bit. Um, unpredictable and it will leave a thin stripe and then a little bit of a fat stripe and look a bit more organic. I'm sorry, I'm distracted because I seem to be having a glitch. I have to close my app and I oh, know. While you're doing that, can I share my screen and oh, show yeah. you a girl on pinch, I mean, on Instagram called Elizabeth Rachel who oh, uses. Ten on black. I think you might have to check. Oh, is it because I, oh, quick time. Oh, I ended quick time. That was stupid, but I pulled the plug out because I wanted to swivel my iPad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Elizabeth Rachel on um, Instagram. Her work is exquisite. If you want to buy some of her stuff from an Etsy shop, do it because it is Everything she makes is beautiful. And she almost exclusively uses this brush pack to do her oils. I mean, look at this. This is like breathtakingly beautiful. It's so Look at good. these peaches. Look. I am linking this in the chat so that everybody can go follow her and yep. be inspired. I Such mean, beautiful work. yeah, the girl is insanely talented all of her florals are just dreamy absolutely beautiful so yep that's what i wanted to share <laughs> yeah thank you for um introducing her to all of us all right i think i have i think i have things working again Do you want me to show my picture that I'm doing oh, yeah. in the meantime a little bit? Yeah, so I'm not being very exact at all. I've got my palette here next to me and I'm just doing my little squinty eyes to, um, to pick out areas of color. So when I do that, I can see there's this purpley pinky dark thing on the side. There's a bit more of a peachy thing in the middle. There's a bit of a yellow going on there and there. So I'm not actually painting shapes in particular, I'm, or, or at least flowers and identifiable flowers. I'm just painting areas of color. And then in the second pass, I'll go back and add some more detail. So say, for example, for this one, if I want to make it look more like there's a petal there and a petal there, I'll go and choose a brighter color. And I'll go back to Thick Herald and drop the opacity. And then I can start adding my brighter 
bits for the petals. Oh, yeah. Let's see. And they don't have to be very panicky and detailed. They can just be sort of smudgy. And here, if I want to maybe push that dark pinky bit back a bit, got this mustardy color. Let's see. I love it. I it's just like it's um I'm trying to find the the words for uh <laughs> it's like it's the, pretty random at the moment, but I haven't overthought. I think that's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Like yeah. you are much more instinctual with it and um you're not like picking it apart, over analyzing the reference, yeah. which is very cool. Yeah. Let's see yours again. All right, so I'm I'm adding in more. I'm feeling inspired to just go for it and not <laughs> think too much about it. Um, and something I, I don't think I have played with before here is adjusting the opacity of a brush to layer in the color. And this is giving very cool results. Um, to add in that depth is very cool. Another thing that I like to do even though the brushes have so much color variation and I have a full color palette to pick from, um, I do like to add more tonality just by using the color picking shortcut, which uh, the default in Procreate is tapping a finger to the screen and holding. Um, because the canvas texture is set above, it has um, those little bits, like the bumps, it has bits of shade, you can easily pull totally darker colors. And then when you paint in, let's do like a pink here. Um, when you start to paint in, you get gradually darker and darker color variation. And then I pull from those darker ones and do a few more and you get um, some good depth that way. Yeah, so you actually start building your tonal um, range. That's really good advice. I love that. And it's good to know uh, because the layer is set to linear burn, the texture is, you can't go the other way necessarily. You can uh, oh, get darker, yeah. but you won't necessarily be able to color pick lighter colors. Yeah. Um, let's see, Tracy asked, the tip to differentiate brushes and palettes is to add an emoji. And so for brushes. You have to go into the brush studio to do that. So I'll show you quick here. Uh, you tap, it opens up the brush studio. And then under about this brush, if you tap the brush name, it'll bring up uh, the keyboard and you can put an emoji in there and then just be sure to hit done and done. So done twice to save that. Um, for uh, brush set, you can tap the brush set to bring up the side menu and tap rename. And for color palettes, you can just tap right on the name of the color palette. palette. Um, and that helps as you're scrolling through. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right, can we check in on, on what you have on your screen? Yes, I've added a couple of leaves. Ooh. So how do you, can you show how you get that gorgeous tapered effect on the leaves? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you my pencil like it's going to be any different. I'm using <laughs> Ratty Dry Oil. And then okay. I've got it maybe 20% size. And this one works really nicely when you press really hard and then you lift, it will give you a little bit of a taper. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. And you can make some nice leaves like that. All right. Uh, let us know in the chat if you are following along live painting. And later on, if uh, if you paint something and post it on Instagram, be sure to tag us. Uh, we yeah. love seeing that. It's so much fun to see those come through. Yeah, it is. It's really cool. I'm going to go to the YouTube live right now so I can see the 
comments. Where do I see them? Nope. Addie, where is the chat on YouTube? Oh, um, I know I, you can see it in the, um, in our stream window um, okay. on the computer. I'm not sure where it is on YouTube, but. Um, Never mind. Comments. My tech, um, <laughs> my tech problems will just have to wait. <laughs> you got to call in one of the teenagers. <laughs> yes, exactly. They've all gone to Hobart to fetch some windows and Hobart. a, a uh, what's it called? A, uh, not a crossbow, uh, a bow, an arrow. They're going to buy a bow and arrow. But I've threatened oh. them with murder if they actually shoot anything. <laughs> yeah, are they buying a target as well? Hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. Hobart is um, the like capital place. city of Tasmania. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. And where we are is Dover, which is really far south. So it's about an hour's drive to Hobart. How long are you in Tasmania for? Are you still locked uh, out of Sydney? No, 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 thank goodness. We're not going to be locked out of Sydney. Um, we're here until the 16th. I, I don't really want to go back to Sydney. They, no. um, they, they're they actually not having a terrible time, but they are having a little bit of COVID. Oh, well, and it's so beautiful where you are. I don't blame I know. you. Not wanting to. And the cherries, I'm so addicted to cherries. It's actually really bad. <laughs> I could eat like a whole kilo of cherries. It's not good for your tummy, but um, it's really good for your soul. Is it, um, do you have trees or? No, the, the orchards here yeah, are just insane. Everywhere you drive, they're just cherry orchards everywhere. And it's cherry season right now. So oh. you can buy them from the side of the road and um, they are so good. They're huge, like like a ping pong ball size and what? like yeah they're like you know when a cherry is not just red it's almost like black it's so red and they're so sweet oh that's crazy i just can't fathom i've never seen cherries that size yeah i think that they maybe don't fit nicely in their export boxes so they sell them to the locals that's amazing I, uh, I went cherry picking once in Bayfield, Wisconsin. Um, yeah. Which has a ton of fruit uh, orchards and, and we were there in cherry season. So we went picking and I just remember, cause I was a kid, um, the big pitting machines and- um, Oh, cool. Cause we, we made pies afterward and it just like churning out all of these pitted cherries that we had just picked fresh from the trees. And there really isn't anything comparable to fresh cherries. No, no, exactly. No, absolutely. A hundred percent agree. Um, Jana asked, does Abby have some new brushes in the works? Yes, I do. Do you want to? Do you want to? Um, I don't know. I, I I don't know. It's like it's like the early stages of pregnancy where you're too scared to tell anybody because you don't know if you're going to make it all the way to the end. It's that. Um. Well, they'll be amazing. <laughs> uh, but how many brushes do you have that haven't made it to the end? Do you have just oh, like so dozens many. of packs? Do you want? Do you want to see? Yeah. I see my. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this is my brush um, library. So these ones here have made it, but yeah, you see all these packs called Untitled, and then I have these other ones. Um, this is uh, like the vast majority of this is just never going to make it to the light of day. Um, but that's how it goes. That's how it goes. 
And I just end up naming them stupid things like this pack, this entire pack is called Mank. And it's just tons of brushes that didn't make it. <laughs> um, <laughs> all these untitled ones have got hundreds in. Gosh, yeah. That, um, I don't know, when I save things to my desktop and you start saving versions and versions and versions, it's kind of oh, like yes. that. And you, exactly. you have like the same name with a different number at the end, but you can't keep track of which number. Uh, yes, you're on. <laughs> we were talking about digital hoarding the other day, and that is a true. Oh yes, like the um, Pinterest. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I'm trying to catch up. I feel like I've been doing more chatting than painting. Well, that's why I was looking for the YouTube comments thing so I could read through those and you didn't have to do that. But I'm sorry I've failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Megan asks, ideas to shade or make petals on super light slash white flowers. I think having a darker background is um, yeah, pretty instrumental there. And also something that you don't realize is that when you're painting something that's white, your brain is telling you this is white. So you're thinking I must be painting with white. But if you do that squinty thing and you just try and block out of your mind the fact that you're painting a white flower and start focusing on the fact that you're just painting the shapes that you're seeing in the color that you're seeing, suddenly you'll start noticing that actually maybe it's not white maybe that bit of it is a bit purpley and maybe that bit of it is reflecting the thing that's next to it and it's a bit green and you're able to um, slowly build the 3d-ish look of a white thing if you forget that it's white and you start yeah. noticing the other colors that it actually is does that make any sense? Yeah, I think the thinking of it in terms of reflection and and color and light um, yeah. going hand in hand helps. Yeah. Um, so it's all it, about. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it, it's about context. So everybody knows a polar bear is white, but if you take a polar bear and you put him on top of some ice, he actually looks yellow. So that's the kind of that's kind of how you can um differentiate different white things on each other yeah the and, then, and then contrasting with um yeah. the flowers or leaves that you're painting next to it as well yes exactly all right um sarah says the live chat button is next to like share report and save buttons <laughs> oh thank you thank you sarah and then Emma asked if we can link your color reference, Abby, and we can for sure do that. Um, we might have to do that at the end or towards the end, um, but it'll be linked in the description. All right. Um, oh, there it is. Do you know what? I wasn't even in the YouTube app. I'm such a dunce. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Emma. Are you on just one layer for all the flowers? So, um, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. How about you? I did one layer for all of the flowers, and now I'm below that for the greenery, um, especially when I'm yeah. painting stems that cross through. Yeah. Um, that helps keep me organized. I, I often do the exactly the same. A night scene that's moonlit without turning it all blue, but also conveying the feeling of night. Um, I would do exactly the same. I would use observation over um, intellect because as humans, we are so wired to know stuff, you know, just instinctively. But sometimes yeah. the stuff that we think we know is incorrect because we aren't observing. So I would find that night scene that I was going to paint and observe really closely the colors. 
Also, and, another thing that I do when I'm painting something that's at night is I will um, draw the thing out and then put an entire layer of dark blue over the top set to linear burn and then get an eraser and erase the highlights. And I think it depends on what your your light source is because if yeah. you were painting a a night scene, you know, you're going to have some kind of light, whether it's the moon or yeah. a campfire. And so that'll dictate yeah. the the color of um, the light. Yes, absolutely. Yes. All right, so now that I have, I'm going to move on to the next part because we're coming up on an hour pretty quickly here. I know. Um, I'm sorry, we've taken a, we've taken a <laughs> stretch. No. Um, I think we have given uh, some, like a ton of information and I'm just loving all of the, uh, the thought process behind um, making these decisions that you're talking us through. Like I said, it's like art class. Um, I really quickly want to address, Jana asked if we're just using the thick oil. I know I jumped um, for the leaves, I jumped to the ratty yep. dry oil, and then for all of the flowers, I used the thick oil brush. Yeah, that's basically exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. And then I have so far just used the two layers. Now I'm jumping down to an empty layer below everything, and I'm going to add some dark um splotches behind my bouquet to oh, make cool. it look dense so it's um you know in shadow and, and what brush do you use for that um i'm going I, I think i'm going to use the uh thick oil just on a lower opacity um let me switch over if i could share your screen abby okay um, check in with where you're at Yep, I'm doing. I'm doing what you're doing. I'm following your lead. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it. it um, see okay. how when you add the darker um, green behind the flowers, it ties them together as one bunch. Because look, if I turn this off, look, they're sort of separate from each other, almost like um, just blobs on top. Yeah. And then when you add the green, it becomes a bunch. That's really, yeah. that's a really good tip, Addy. Like a true bouquet. Yeah. Um, and right. then how do we do the, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> once I have that on my back layer, um, I'm going to pop up to my layer above the bouquet, but still below the texture. And I am... I'm going to use this to add some some depth and more color variation to really make this pop. So I am changing the blend mode to color burn. And then I'm going to make it into a clipping mask directly over my florals. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to choose, let's see, I'm going to the, the classic color picker and pull it over to blue. I'm going to choose a blue gray here that's not too dark. Um, because it'll pretty quickly with the color burn um, turn to black if you go too far into uh, the um, under the brightness slider under color. If you go too far over, um, it, like beyond a 50% threshold, it becomes black. Um, and then, because this is a clipping mask, I don't have to worry about it going over into my leaves at all. So I can work on this separately. I'm using the Brushtacular Express brush for this and painting in uh, just some darker areas here. And with this gray blue, it adds this shadowy effect. Uh, yeah, that is magic. Intense. That looks so good, Addy. Okay, I'm going for it too. And it doesn't have to be and, you know, precise, you can just kind of swoosh it over, blob it on, making it up, that, you know. That really lifts the some areas out and pushes some back. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun trick, a good way to get more texture in too. 
Um, I am going to quickly do the same greenery. And I do like to keep these separate so that I can um, have a little bit more control. Make this into a clipping mask as well. That is such a cool, that's just changed everything. I, um, after I finish, if I watch the time lapse um, on almost all of them, once I add something with a blend mode, you'll see things flash back and forth as I yeah. edit myself, turn the blend mode off and on and off and on <laughs> and off and on. <laughs> um, but I, I just feel like adding this little bit of pop makes yeah. a big difference. It makes such a difference. It, it's also the thing that gives it the super realistic oils look because you can really see that brushy texture in from using that brush. Yeah. And it gives it more of an oil vibe. That is really cool. Especially like like you can see. I'm sorry, I'm leaning forward and pointing at the screen <laughs> like a, a widow. The um, leaf right at the top behind those blue um, flowers. You can see it as it's there. That yeah. is very cool. Yeah, it just brings it out. It's like varnishing wood. Yes, that's varnishing that's wood. Okay, so then the other tip that I wanted to show is I can see in some of these areas I didn't use a lot of text, a uh, lot of pressure, and so I have a little more texture than I want coming through here. And sometimes I want it to look a little bit thicker. So to do that really easily, what I like to do is duplicate my flower layer. And this is typically because I have too much of the greenery showing through uh, the flowers themselves. And after I've duplicated it, I am going to shift it slightly. So I'm going to tap the uh, transform arrow here and then I'm tapping with my Apple Pencil outside of the bounding box of the selection area just a few times to nudge the layer over. And you can see it's shifted almost like it's a, like a motion blur. And if I go into the layers panel and turn that off, you can see how much more opaque it is now. And to get rid of the like motion blur effect, what I'm going to do is tap back up to my upper of these two layers. And on the selection tool, I'm going to automatic, and then I'm going to just tap to select all of the area outside of the bouquet. And I have my selection threshold set super low. So it's at 0%, so it's not going to grab in the middle of the bouquet. You can tap in some of these areas if you want, but I don't want to eliminate all of the texture if that makes sense. Once I have that selected, I'm going down to the duplicated duplicated layer and I'm going to clear that. So you can use three fingers to scrub the screen back and forth. You can also um, go into add under, under the actions menu and hit cut. And again, that's the, the difference that that makes if you wanna get a really quick thicker oil effect. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to super quickly to tie this all together, um, swoosh in some background color here. So let's hide my reference and using again, the thick oil on full opacity. I'm just going to brush this in using lots of different strokes to get that color variation. And I'm also varying my pressure um, so that I get some, some of those textured areas. If you ever feel like you have too much color, you can switch over to the eraser tool uh, just by pressing and holding from paintbrush and it'll automatically erase with that brush that you were using on the paintbrush. And then use really light pressure to um, lift up some as well. 
I'm using linseed oil textured for the same thing. And it's doing a lot of smudging and squidging at the same time. Ooh, let me switch over to yours. Oh, I love that. Which I probably should make it a bit darker. Because it's a bit. I'm going to use, which is my smudge at brush tacular. Make it big. It looks so good. I'm so not sure beautiful. This is the color I would have gone for. So I'm going to do my favorite thing hue, saturation, brightness. Let's see if blue is better. <gasps> blue is better. Oh, it looks so good. Drop some of that. Yes, that's, I prefer that. Love it. I have found that I mostly use hue saturation um, adjustment for color. I am not sure how to properly use the gradient map yet. I haven't figured out a way that I like um, oh, okay. using that, uh, that filter. Yeah, a layer. And I think maybe because I don't paint in grayscale, it's not as yeah. useful, but yeah. Um, yeah, it is a bit finicky and tricky. Yeah. So I know we're on time or at time, but I wanted to quickly show how I would then use the um, impasto, impasto <laughs> effect. Yep. So I've added a new layer on top. And for this, I just want to add some highlight on the flowers. So I'm going to go into my color. Um, I'll use the color picker and then in tandem with the classic pane here, and I'll just lighten up all of my colors that I'm choosing as I go. And I'm going to use um, under just the oil brushes, so not within the textures, I'm gonna use the wet and greasy brush here. And I'm going to go even a little lighter here. And I think uh, the less is more is definitely important for me to remember here um, <laughs> at these highlights. What palette am I using? Uh, Yana, I'm using a palette that I pulled from this image on my screen. So um, the same way that Addie showed at the beginning of the session, um, she saved, I'll show you how to do it again. So I, um, I saved the image and now I'm going to open my um, photos app side by side and then I can drag the image that I've saved into the palette and it populates with the color from that photograph. And um, after afterward or maybe now if you have it pulled up on your screen but for sure afterward we'll link the photo uh, that Abby's using as reference. Um, oh, so when did, where did I get it again? It was from Pinterest. It was in the Pinterest board that oh. I made called Flowers. Yeah. If, in there. if you don't follow Abby on Pinterest, you should because <laughs> she has like 700 flower images. <laughs> and it's a fantastic but we're thing. talking about the digital hoarding. <laughs> All right, so I've added in just some some little bits here and it's all on this layer. And I'm going to set this to alpha lock um, by using two fingers to swipe right on this, the layer and just like pull it over to the right. And this will allow everything to stay on, um, on top of that brush stroke without painting outside of those lines with the 
shadows. So then in the oil brushes, I'm gonna go up and grab the thick paint shadows brush because I only have light colors here that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to pick out a solid gray. And the other um, reason that I'm using Alpha Lock and not the selection tool is that I don't have a lot of overlapping brush strokes here. Um, so I have my uh, opacity somewhat down too, um, which I think is just personal preference, how, how strong you want this effect. Yeah. And painting some of that in. But again, not trying not to go overboard. Which I just, yeah, just so satisfying. Just like, yeah. <laughs> I only did two, but just those two are enough to make it kind of is sort of jump out of the page. Yeah. I maybe added too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go just erase a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Oh, another thing with you using the eraser, I actually use the eraser on set to um, a brush in the pack while I'm painting because the texture is also in the eraser. And often if you want like a very sharp edge that you can't necessarily get with a brush, you can erase and it'll still look like it's part of the painting because it'll leave a bit of texture and um, it's actually quite nice. Yeah, I had um, here, you can see there's this like slightly bumpy edge here. Yeah. Um, very versatile. Okay, so that's what that's what I'll, I'm calling it. I'm leaving it at that. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's add yours. Oh my gosh, it's oh. so beautiful. Do you know what I, I always do at the end of any of these oil paintings? I do this. At the top, there's that spanner. So tap the spanner, go to the add menu, copy canvas. So now I've taken essentially a photograph of my canvas. So I go to the very top layer, do the three finger down swipe and paste. And now if I want to adjust my um, painting and get a better composition, I can enlarge it and go, do you know what? This painting is actually much better if I just show that much of it or so just that much. See, that's, that's suddenly already a better image than this one. It makes such agree? a big difference. Yeah, because and then you don't have to very yeah, it's very hard to paint off the edge of the format when it's such a yes. tiny format like this. But it's much easier to just go zhuik and make it big, doink. It's the composition is better. I love anyway. it. I'm gonna I'm gonna show the difference here with mine too because it is um, remarkable. So that's after. And maybe that's a little too yeah. zoomed in, but before. No, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it makes a yeah. huge difference. And with this, you want to see the texture. So seeing it zoomed in yeah. is, is so much better. It's actually yeah. really nice. Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, next session, we'll be doing about this oil pack as well. But I will be showing you some landscape painting. Um, like, I don't know if you want to share my screen, these ones that I've been preparing, I've been preparing furiously here. Um, so, so what I've been, mountain. what I've been doing is, um, going on Google maps and just doing street view and finding views. These two come from Unsplash, but those ones at the top and that one come from Google maps. So I'm going to just do a little demo of how to be a Google maps stalker and do some cool paintings. 
So, so excited for the next one. Um, we have just one more question before we go. Will it affect the resolution to enlarge, Tracy asks. And yes, it will. Uh, yeah, to a degree. But here, let me add my screen back. Um, if you go and under transform, there is this bottom toolbar, there's bilinear, bicubic, and nearest neighbor. And depending on what result you want, you can change these to adjust the, um, the pixelation or lack thereof. And so yep. nearest neighbor yep. is going to be sharp, but that also will result in more pixelation the larger that you go. Um, yeah. Whereas bilinear and bicubic are increasingly soft, um, they like recalibrate the pixels to like yes. slightly feather out the edges as yeah. they get bigger, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think we got everybody else's questions, but if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and we will answer them there. Cool. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Definitely yeah. come back for the landscapes next time. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Addy. That was really a lovely little thing to learn. It was awesome. Thank you for making such wonderful brushes. Bye, everybody. <laughs> cool. Bye, everyone.